Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Anthony. Um, the Banker is a film about unsung heroes who came together, took a risk, and changed history. Tell us about your character and his place in this amazing story and what drew you to the role. Well, I play Bernard Garrett. Uh, he's a young man with a dream, a very important dream. He grew up in Texas. He moved out to, tech, to uh, California to follow his dream. Uh, he wanted to become a, a real estate mogul. Um, and living in the South, he realized at that point in time, in the 40s and 50s, that, you know, the West was the way to move. That's where, that was the land of opportunity. Um, so he got out to California and realized it wasn't much different than Texas. So he decided to come home and make a difference for the people like him who had a dream. Um, the banker uh, takes place in the 1960s or from really from the 30s to, to the 60s, mm -hmm. um, Jim Crow era. But in many ways, the banker is just as contemporary, relevant, and relatable today. What would you like audiences to take away? Um, that um, financial discrimination is real. Uh, there are communities, there are people in this country that aren't allowed the same um, opportunities as other people. Um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to build up a neighborhood or, 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 or develop a group of people without finance. You know, and the banks control that finance. So if I want to start a business, I have to go to a bank to get that money or I have to find someone who's willing to lend that money. If no one's willing to lend that money, I can't start that business. So certain neighborhoods, certain groups of people are being impoverished on purpose, and we need to support and build up those neighborhoods and those people. Um, we've just finished celebrating Black History Month, and the banker tells the story of an important piece of black history. Though it's inspired by true events, the central story of the film is largely unknown. Why do you think it's taken so long to hear it, and how does it feel to be telling it now? Uh, first, it feels great. Um, I, George Nofi, who uh, wrote and directed this film, we did um, Adjustment Bureau together 11, 12 years ago. And um, the, uh, his uh, editing assistant, Joel, told us this story that he had heard. And at that moment, I was in. I was blown away by the, the charisma, charm, the uh, designated pride of this man who wanted to change his life for his son, for his family and was willing to do it by any means necessary. So um, I, was, I was just really excited about it. I was really uh, blown away by the idea of someone not taking no for an answer. And I, I think it's, um, it's, in, it's important to tell, and we need more of those stories, not just you know, from every aspect of our culture, because America's a great melting pot. So we need to tell those stories of this melting pot, not just one aspect. It's like a gumbo. You know, you don't want to just hear about the rice. You want to hear about the roux. You want to hear about the seafood. You want to hear about the spices. You want to hear the whole story of that gumbo. So I think this story, you know, though it's not a, a jumping off point or a starting point for that, because there's been many more dynamic, amazing stories told before this one, I think it's one in a long line of those stories that people get to enjoy and see and learn more about American history and culture. Um the story is an entertaining movie about a group of uh, folks that defied all of the odds to beat a system um, that had been stacked against them. But talk about the humor in the film and the dynamic between you and um, Sam. <laughs> I've known Sam Jackson longer than anybody in this business. Uh, one of my first movies was with Sam, and he's been kind of a, a mentor uh, to me since then. He's been a voice in my ear since then, and I've always been able to go to him or just look to him for advice and counsel. And, you know, for me to get him to be a part of this movie it was, it was, a, huge, was a huge, I feel, uh, get for me. It was a huge feather in the hat of my career because Sam, Sam doesn't have to do anything. He only do projects that he believes in, and he saw this project and he believed in it. And because of that, we were able to get Nia Long, who is a phenomenal actress and someone who has not only left her mark on this business, but someone who is appreciated and respected by a large group of women in the world today because of the way she presented women and all the projects that she's done. And Nicholas Holt, who's at the beginning of his career, but at the same time has given a lot to the business of film as far as great performances. I feel like to put the four of us together is kind of like the, the perfect storm. And when you get four people together who really appreciate respect and have fun with each other, the, the comedy of the situation is always gonna come out. You know, no matter how good or how bad, certain things are always funny. 
you know, and um, with this movie, it's no different. I feel like as bad and as, as bleak as things might have felt, certain at certain times you have to laugh to stop from crying. You have to laugh to just realize how ridiculous the situation is that you're in. Uh, so I think that bleeds through into the movie perfectly. Excellent. Um, can you talk about a memorable experience or anecdote from filming, anything that really stood out, a story that you want to share? Uh <laughs> There was um, one day we were um, we were shooting and it was all of us were on set. It was we were out by the, this uh, this jail um, in out by the water in San Diego. I don't know outside of California somewhere, but it was this beautiful landscape and this beautiful scene and this beautiful area. And there was this jail, so I'm like, wow, these must be the luckiest prisoners on earth like they get to look out at this sunset every day and like it, everybody was so nice but there were these like seals or walruses or something and every time we would talk the seals would answer us back so <laughs> we're we're doing the most pivotal scene in the movie where we're trying to sum up the movie and every time this seal would go Arr! so <laughs> so every time we would say our line is me sam nia and we're like, so, oh, man, you just got out of jail. And the seal would go, Arr! So <laughs> we couldn't, there was nothing we could do. Like, we couldn't run the seals off. You know, I didn't know if you got fish or, what, like, what do you give a seal to make them leave? But the, we, we ended up having to um, figure out a way to get over the fence and get rid of the seals. <laughs> All the good behind the scenes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, finally, how do you hope that audiences will feel or, or think or what conversations do you hope to inspire? Um, I think it's 2020, and I would like audiences to come out with come out of this movie looking from whence we came and how far we've come. I think um, you know there's an opportunity in this country to turn a new leaf, to turn a corner, and as a generation, we've started that process. Uh, I'm a father of sons of young men, and I realize that kids aren't born assholes; we make them that way. And I think we're finally getting to a point now where we're starting to see we want our kids to grow up to be the people that we weren't. And I hope that people see this movie and, and, and you know, uh, take the promise from it. Take the, 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 the spirit of it where this young man, along with his amazing wife, wouldn't take no for an answer. You know, and they were able to find help in Sam's character. And because of the two of them and their hard work and ingenuity, they were able to make their dreams come true. Fantastic. Finally, how does it feel to be here uh, tonight premiering in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee at the you Civil know, Rights it, Museum? It feels great. It, it, it feels, it, it, it feels uh, career affirming. Um, you know, there are certain things in, in the history of America that kind of are benchmarks. And, you know, some of those things happened here in Memphis. So for the Civil Rights Museum to be here and to be able to have a premiere at that museum and be able to walk that museum and, you know, learn and see, it's, it's, um, it's phenomenal. I wish more people had that opportunity. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.